<coughs> well, Brother Randy asked me to cover for him tonight, so I'm uh, honored to be able to come here and talk to everybody. I'm going to call this God's Photo Album or Pictures of God and His Throne. Amen. Of course, there are no pictures in the Bible per se, no photographs, no images. However, God in His Word has painted word pictures for us. Amen. And the way this came about, I was... I had a desire in my heart, and I still do, have a desire in my heart to see God, to see the things of God. And in reading the scripture, you read passages, oh, like the burning bush. And you, you, you imagine, what did that look like, you know? Uh, so what I'm gonna do tonight I'm going to attempt to communicate to you and paint pictures in your mind, in your mind's eye, so that you can see clearly what this scripture passage is talking about. Now, our minds, when we hear words, we think and we see an image. When I say dog, you think of any number of thousands of different kinds of dogs, okay? If I say a black dog, you can picture a black dog in your mind. But if I say a small black puppy, that presents a different image, you see? So this is what we're gonna do today. So, and the way this started with me is I'm thinking, Lord, okay, I'm, I have all these negative images in my mind, but I need a godly image to focus on, you know? Instead of images of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you know, chocolate, Reese's peanut butter cups. <laughs> You know, where, where it hits home. And when you tempt it in the flesh, wouldn't it be great to replace those images with new godly images of the Bible? Wouldn't that help? That would help us in our attempt at the conquest of the mind, right? Because the mind is the battlefield. So here I have... Uh, meditate on godly images, cast down bad images and bad thoughts. Replace those with godly images and godly thoughts. By doing that, by meditating on godly images that I will deal with today, we will be able to still the storm in our mind, still the, the, the jibber-jabber of the uh, different things that we hear we could go through a traumatic experience with a spouse or girlfriend or boyfriend or somebody or boss at work. They could uh, say things to you or do things to you that can just stick in your craw, as they say. It just, it just sticks with you and you're trying to get rid of all that. And of course, God has given us tools like the word to cast down imagination, <coughs> bring every one of those thoughts, place them under arrest. Uh, is what it says in 2 Corinthians. Bring, bringing those thoughts into captivity means bringing them, placing them under arrest. And by thinking on these godly images, it helps to bring peace in our mind and in our soul, our emotions and so on. Plus, it helps me when I'm going to sleep at night. Uh, I can think of a certain thing, a certain image uh, in the Bible, and I can just fall asleep thinking about that. And of course, Philippians 4.8 says, think on these things. Think on things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, and praiseworthy. 
All right? So the first thing we're going to talk about is Jesus is God. Not only the Son of God, like somebody told me, oh no, Jesus ain't God, he's the Son of God. Well, hello, you know, there are scriptures all through the Bible that talks about uh, Jesus and the divinity of, of Jesus being Almighty God. And here's the verse, it says, Proverbs 30, verse 4, Who hath ascended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Okay? Here's another one. Jesus got around. In Micah 5, 2, it says, But thou, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So Jesus just didn't appear and be created when he was born of the Virgin Mary. He has always been. Okay? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? He is the creator of everything. So, Jesus, as we will see, we will see some images that God has in the Bible. God appeared in the Old Testament in the form of the Son of God, the pre-incarnate Jesus Christ. Pre-incarnate meaning before he had a flesh and blood body. He was on the earth uh, talking uh, and communicating to people. Now, here is a passage that I got very intrigued with in Ezekiel chapter 8. Ezekiel, if you can picture this in your mind, he's minding his own business, he's at home, he's entertaining the elders of Judah in his home. And then all of a sudden, he has an experience, a a being, a person, uh, in the form of a, uh, it says that from the waist down, he was a flame of fire. From the waist up, he was the color of amber. Okay? So let's read this. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his waist downward, fire, and from the waist upward as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand, and he took me by a lock of my head, grabbed me by the hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem. Now, anybody want to know what amber looks like? It's the color of molten metal. And so, that's what he looked like from the waist up. Because, well, let's continue. So this is one image that I found very uh, intriguing to me that wow, what would it be like to be approached by this kind of uh, experience, by this, this person coming to you. The next one we're going to see is in Ezekiel chapter 1 and I call this a fire tornado. Alright, imagine this and it's easy for me to imagine this because I, we had a form, and we would, uh, I would be walking the field, and you see for a long ways away, no trees in the way you can see far. And I just pictured myself in this passage here, going through this experience that Ezekiel went through, looking out into the distance, 
there is a big cloud and there's lightning shooting out of the cloud and it's approaching you, it's coming closer and closer. And then as it gets closer, you can see the color of amber, it says, in there. So it's getting closer, it's getting brighter, the lightning is still coming. And then the clouds part, and he sees a fiery tornado. Okay? Imagine a tornado like an F4 or F5 tornado coming at you, except this is made of fire. Okay. And so, let's start reading. Verse 4, Ezekiel 1 verse 4, And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the midst thereof as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire. Verse 22. Now, he is talking, he goes on after verse 4, he talks about the living beings that he sees. Now, let me explain something. What, he talks about the living beings, each having four faces, and it talks about wheels, a wheel within a wheel. So I started thinking, well, what in the world would a wheel within a wheel be? And so I thought of a gyroscope. Have y'all ever seen a gyroscope? It's a wheel within a wheel. They use that in aviation to, uh, uh, for the instrument panel. So I'm thinking of a massive, huge, gyroscope that's spinning one way and the, and the inside wheel is spinning another way. And it says that these wheels are wheels of fire. They're on fire. Okay? So, let's proceed. Here it talks about And the likeness of the firmament upon the heads of the living creature was as the color of the terrible crystal. Now this is language from the King James. It says, the color of the terrible crystal stretched forth over their heads. And the word terrible, if you look at the, uh, the original language in the Hebrew, it means awesome, breathtaking. It's like, <gasps> you see that and it takes your breath away. It is so beautiful. Okay? A crystal is a gemstone. Right? Think of, and he's saying, this, the ceiling above the living creatures is a ceiling of crystal gemstones. Now, it could be all diamonds, and you'd have a tremendous white light. Because you have light shining through those gemstones. But I'm taking the liberty to show you what I think. It was similar to this. You can have rubies. You can have this other one on the side, purple. Sapphire and an, an amber colored one. But imagine a multitude of different colors and <laughs> The light of God shining through there is shooting beams and rays of light all over. Okay? Now, verse 26. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne as the appearance of a sapphire stone, which is what you see here. And upon the likeness of the throne was the likeness as the appearance of a man above it. Well, in all this supernatural experience here, here is a man. How can that be? Verse 27. And I saw as the color of amber, as the appearance of fire round about within it, from the appearance of his waist upward, and from the appearance of his waist downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. Awesome God. Awesome God, that's right. 
Verse 28. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, which is a rainbow, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spoke. Mm -hmm. So he sees this experience, and he is awestruck by the glory of God. Okay, remember that phrase. We'll get to it again after a while. Now, let's go on to Daniel. Daniel has a dream. And this is what he sees. I watched till thrones were put in place. And the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. Remember we saw wheels in Ezekiel? Here's the wheels again. Okay? So here we have the Ancient of Days, which is Father God, Abba Father. He's seated his garment and his hair, uh, white as snow, white as pure wool, and a sitting on a throne of fiery flame. Verse 10. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Here is two pictures of lava flowing down hill from a volcano. That is a fiery stream. Or you could think of another different kind of fire stream, like a, a furnace of fire being shot through a, a, a tube of some sort. Okay? That's the Father, right? The Father, this is on the throne. Okay. This is what is coming forth from the throne. Okay? The throne of God. The throne of God. <coughs> okay? This is in Daniel, in chapter 7. All right. Next. Daniel 7, 13. I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven, he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. The angels presented the Son of Man before Abba Father, before the Ancient of Days. So these are all images, right? I'm painting pictures in your mind that you can use to help you replace the bad thoughts that you're having, the bad experiences that you're having, replace it with new, godly, biblical thoughts. Okay? Next. The burning bush is another example. And, okay, this is Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto Moses, unto him, in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Here's an example. Now, in the natural, the, all of the leaves would be burned off, and then the, the the sticks, the branches, would eventually turn to ash. But here, in the burning bush example in the Bible, it was not consumed. It was still whole. Whole leaves, whole branches. So this is another awesome picture of Almighty God's... Um, now, what I'm thinking is, since Jesus, our God, is a consuming fire, that was Jesus standing there, the bush just got in the way. Yeah. You know, because he's already a consuming fire like we've seen so far. All right? Now, another example is on Mount Sinai. Here you have about three million Israelites standing before Mount Sinai Amen. and God is there, and there are 
trumpet sounds being heard, supernatural sounds coming from the sky. You don't know where these, who's making the sounds, correct? Well, these are the angels of God blowing the trumpets. And they are about a mile or two away from Mount Sinai in their camp. But the sound is so ear-piercing and so jarring to your body, it almost hurts. Okay? And so God says, okay, Moses, come closer. Come to the mountain. And so you have to walk closer and closer to this ear-piercing, bone-shattering sound of the trumpets. Not only that, but God comes down upon the mountain in a, we call it a tornado of fire. Now, okay, this is Exodus 19, 18. Now, Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked greatly. Whoa. So, right after this, God admonished his people. A warning against idolatry. Now, we can think of idolatry in a number of ways, but idolatry is whatever comes between you and God. Okay? It could be the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. It could entail all of those images dealing with those three things. Uh, and I'm not going to get into detail. That's for y'all to, to, to think about. But in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 23, he is telling the people, Moses is saying, Take heed unto yourselves, lest you forget the covenant of the Lord your God, which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God has forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Amen. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now let's go to another story. And this is where Abraham sees God. Abraham is told by God, Get you some three head of livestock. I want these to be three-year-old livestock, which means they are breeding stock. These are income-producing properties. Okay? He says, Genesis 15, 9. And he said unto him, Take an heifer of three years old, a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, and divided them, or he split them down the middle, and he laid each piece one against another, for the birds he did not divide. And it came to pass, that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Okay? So here we have our God who is a consuming fire. Our God is at this point a smoking furnace. He is a blast furnace. He is his presence walking in front of those carcasses consumes that offering to ash. Imagine a blast furnace being pointed directly at that side of livestock. Okay? It'll consume it. Alright, so that's another image from the Bible. Another image is Isaiah sees God. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, you've seen weddings where the bride is walking down, down the aisle and she has a long train, 10 foot long. This train of Almighty God fills the whole temple. 
okay, it is tremendously big and long and glorious and awesome. Isaiah sees this and he says, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. I live among the people of unclean lips. In other words, I have been cussing all my life, and I live among a among people who have been cussing and blaspheming and all that. God says, tells the angel, take a coal, place it on his lips, and, he, and the coal from the altar purifies him, cleanses him of all his iniquity. Then God asks the question, who will go for me? He says, I will, I will. Pick me, pick me. Because a minute before, he says, I'm undone. But now, God has healed him and delivered him from that iniquity Amen. and put a desire in his heart to do what God wants. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Amen. All right. The next one is the fiery furnace. <clears throat> King Nebuchadnezzar has an idol standing up tall and he commands everybody to bow down to this idol. But there's three guys, three Israelites, who said, no, I'm not doing it. We're not going to do it. We're going to worship our God. And so, these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of of the burning fiery furnace because they refused to bow. And then the king answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Our God, our God, Jesus, the consuming fire was there inside of that consuming fire furnace. But yet, his fire put out the harmful fire. Okay? He had a Holy Ghost fire around him that was only meant for good. And it, it saved the three, three kids. Having supper with God. Did you know that at the Mount Sinai experience, God called Moses and 70 of the elders to come up to the mountain to meet God. And so in Exodus chapter 24, verse 9, it says, Then went up Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the God of Israel. I said, they saw the God of Israel. And there was under his feet, under God's feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. We already saw a picture of the sapphire stone. <clears throat> and verse 11, And upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand, also they saw God and did eat and drink. Now it's interesting, he mentions Moses, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu. Alright. It seems to me that if you are going to be up in the mountain, a fiery mountain, burning with fire, with smoke billowing like a furnace, with supernatural trumpet sounds, that that would have an effect on you. you know, I think it would have an effect on me. But we see a few chapters further on that Nadab and Abihu were guilty of offering false fire, a false sacrifice, and God killed them. Okay? So, apparently, those two men didn't take this to heart. Like the rest of the children of Israel, they were fed supernaturally for 40 years with manna, with quail. And it's like, well, they just, like, they just came to 
taken for granted. Well, I'm going to get up this morning and go pick my manna, eat it, eat up the manna, get to cook my quail. Because they just expected it. They became familiar with God's supernatural miracles that he was doing every day for them. Not only that, but he split the rock in half and the rock poured forth water to allow them to sustain themselves and not die of thirst for 40 years. Okay? That water followed them. That rock, as it were, followed them, which was Christ. Okay? Everybody clear on all that? Amen. Okay. Now, they saw God and they did eat and drink. All right. John the Baptist said in Matthew 3.11, Indeed, I baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, Amen. whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Here's that word fire again. Yeah. Our God is a God of fire. Amen. Okay? And so we need to seek for another. If we haven't been, if you haven't been filled with the Holy Spirit, you need to seek that with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Okay? I don't know how I could live without that. And it says, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. I think that we should all ask God for that fire. Amen. Ask God and receive everything He has for us, right? Amen. Okay. That anointing. That's right. <laughs> Day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2. There's a rushing sound of a rushing mighty wind. There is fire being blown onto them. Amen. And my question is this, could this be the pillar of fire? Could this be the tornado of fire that appeared unto them and the fire came on them? There's no proof, it doesn't say that, it's, it's not very descriptive, but that's what I envision. Because God spoke to Moses out of the pillar of fire mm -hmm. and out of the cloud. He communicated with Moses that way. So, here we get to the bottom line. Bottom line is this. John 17, 5. <laughs> Jesus is praying his high priestly prayer to Abba, Father. And he's saying, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory of which I had with thee before the world was. So we're seeing here, he's reiterating that he had glory with the Father, and we just went through several examples of him uh, and the throne. Verse 17, he's praying to God, I pray that you sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth. Amen. As we get into the word, meditate on the word of God, Trust the Word of God. Believe the Word of God. Believe Him and ask Him that He sanctify you. Okay? Because I don't really know of anybody that is totally sanctified. I'm waiting for that day when I can meet a bunch of people who are totally 100% sanctified, sinless, walking in faith and love. And I'm praying that that will happen to me and all of us. Amen. Right? Amen. Okay. Uh, John 17, verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Amen. So it says that the glory that, that Abba Father gave Jesus Jesus has given us. Amen. So we have that glory, and it's a glory in earthen vessels through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way that we can ever get the glory. It's through the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. Holy Spirit. That, that'll stand in the Word. Yep. Okay. Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. 
Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How many wants to see God? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is a promise from Jesus. Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. This is the end. I'm done. 